What is the crack and welcome back to another video. In this video I'm going to be showing you how to do a Weeping Angels effect from Doctor Who. So I'm going to show you first what it looks like and then I'm going to show you how to do it. So this is in Unity 5.5 and I'm going to be doing it in uh, C Sharp. If you want a JavaScript version let me know in the comments and I'll try my best to send you one. So as you can see there when you look at it and look away it moves so right there it, it didn't actually work but it works most of the time and I kind of like the way sometimes it kind of falls because that kind of adds to a it kind of like it was moving and then it just kind of fell over like like a Toy Story Andy's uh, toys effect thing so kind of like oh <laughs> it just falls right over and then you can also add to it a, um, a sound if you wanted where if it got within a certain distance to you it will give off like a scream. Also, there's one of my uh, invisible enemies just creeping there for some reason. I actually don't know why that is there. But um, let's get into it. I've already opened up. I've already made a new script. You can call it whatever you want. But um, first, do a public uh, game object. Public game object. And call it um, enemy. Call it whatever you want. It does not make a difference also as far as I know you don't need the start also create another one public game object sorry about that don't know why I've done that game object and then player this the player is going to be used for the object you want it to follow the enemy is going to be used for the thing you want to move you could also get rid of that and just put use it as game object if you wanted so you would literally go enemy dot transform dot position and then well there's a few ways you can do this I'm gonna do it this exact same way I done it so first we need a another void which is then gonna be on tr trigger with a capital T I don't know why that didn't work on come on keyboard on trigger enter and then actually on trigger yeah on trigger enter works actually I'm so used to using on trigger stay for a hurry game but uh do that and then in this you can call it just call and then no just call and then collider call collider or is it collider call Collider, come on, collider, call. Yeah, sorry about my uh, computer being slow. Um, and then you go, if um, game object, or if call dot game object, game object dot tag, and then equals equals. You do the uh, quotations. I'm not the best of what these are called, to be honest. And then you go also up here. My bad. You need a public. You can you can do this as a float or an int. It's completely up to you on how fast you want it to move. Float is a like decimals so like 0 0.5 0 0.1 where int is one two three four full numbers and then floats are half numbers so public float and we will call this speed so there we go and now in here you just literally go speed is equal to zero and the tag you want it to collide with you can call it player I like calling it looking so it knows you're looking at it and then you literally just copy this paste it down below also uh, this wasn't closed right at another squiggly bracket and now change this from enter to exit exit keyboard exit <laughs> and set speed to 5 also because it's a float you need to put an F at the end of it so it knows it's a float and um, up here you literally go let me uh, think what was it okay um, sorry about that it crashed for some reason so you go 
transform dot position vector is equal is equal to vector command vector tree dot move forward and then you go bracket uh, transform dot position and then player dot transform dot position then you do a multiply by speed because that's how fast you want to do it and then multiply by time dot delta time so what that pretty much means do we need another one no so what that pretty much means is the transform of the object that this is on well, also, sorry about that. I wasn't zoomed in. I don't know why I wasn't. Um, so transform dot position is equal to the player's position. Well, it's trying to be equal to the player's position. Moving by as fast as you made it uh, earlier, which is the speed up here. And then it'll do that over a certain amount of time. So that should be all of it. So let's see if it worked. So now we go to our... Actually, we won't do it on our mannequin. I'll do it on a cube. Also, there's one other thing you need to do for this. You need to go to your player. Uh, my player is right here. You then need to go into it. Create a box or a cube. Make it whatever size you want. Turn off its render. So you don't see it anymore. Also, if you want, you can turn off cast shadows. Move it to the front of your player. So it's in front. So as you'll know here if you see the box. So put that where it's in front of it. And parent it to your camera. So wherever it looks, it will tilt with it. And then give it the tag looking. Or whatever you defined it as in this part of the script here so whatever you you could set that as your player so when it's not colliding with your player move towards it it can be whatever you want i have already set that up so i will get rid of it just as a point of reference to show yous um this is mine uh where is mine gone give me two seconds mine is right here as you can see mine is really big because I wanted to be able to be on both sides of the house and still not make it run at you you can also go in and change this to where if it collides with a wall shorten the distance to where it won't like if you look up through the floor it won't activate it and when you look away it won't try to go through the floor at you there's loads of things you can do this is just a basic version to give you a understanding of how it works in the first place so this actually isn't on my um on my player I have another script where this will copy the uh, position and rotation of my camera without it being actually connected to my player that way uh, I can pick up my keys and whatnot without that getting in the way so um, let me make a let me click the mannequin turn off their script let me create a cube uh, let's just call this testing and now let's carry uh, let's carry let's drop the new script onto it as you can see we have got a an error in the script so it says it takes two arguments so let's see what what did we do wrong what did i do wrong yeah okay so right here this is not a multiply my bad i was thinking that when i was writing it it's a it's a exclamation point i think i don't know what they're called it's not the it's not a full stop it's the one beside a full stop I don't know names of them I mo I just call most of them squiggly bits and spibbly bops and if it works it works so now we will see that the script works I just uh, done the wrong button there my bad it's one great thing about unity it lets you know if you messed up so now you don't need a rigid body on it I just like having a rigid body on it so you can actually see physical apl physics applying to it um, I'm pretty sure we don't need to drag an enemy into it that was 
just kind of a, a thing I put into it. Just if you wanted, you could go in here and then go enemy transform that position. And then in here, you would also have to do enemy. It's up to you, whatever you want. Uh, so now I need to grab my player. Drag it in here. Let's give it a speed of three and press play. So now let's see if it works. So as you can see, it's already moving towards us. When we look at it, it stops. We look away, it starts moving. Look away. Look away from it. it, starts moving towards us and we have it working. And you can already see the mannequin is doing the same thing, even though I have the script on it telling it not to, which is a little weird. A little bit creepy. You could just have that as well. You could have a. You can put another script on it where it will always look at you. So what you would do for that is in update, you would then add transform dot look at, and then you would literally just go player player. And then that will make the cube always look at you. So now, come on. Here we go. What's this saying here? Uh, Unity engine cannot convert game type. Okay. So what that is saying is game object is not able to work with it. So just literally copy that do player 2 and change this to a transform transform and then just put player 2 here that's the easiest way around it instead of trying to convert your game object to a transform and all that it's just easier to do that and there we go let's see if it worked we have no errors they're just little things saying something has not been set up with my game so now if we press play you will see if we look at it look away you don't really notice it because of it being um what's it called because if it's it's a box you don't really notice it but if you did put it on a body it would work fairly well as you can see it works perfectly fine with the mannequin if you don't want it to rock back and forward like that you would then go into it click its rigid body and lock its z-axis z-axis stops it from rocking left and right well that's its x on the box my bad so it would be x then on the box it's z on my mannequin for some reason as you can see the box already moves towards you right away so to stop that also you could then go in and make a You would then go in here, make a new void. I'm also going to zoom in. I don't know why I keep zooming out. Sorry about that. Do start. And in that, you would literally just go speed is equal to zero. And that will stop it from moving right away. So once my computer realizes it's not a potato, <laughs> it will work. So hopefully, let's see. And boom. It will not move until you look at it. And then look away. And then it will start chasing you. So yeah. Also, again, you can you can stop that. That's just tilting over like the mannequin does. You can, you can just stop that with a little bit of code. But yeah. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you did enjoy, if you did enjoy and found it useful in any way, please give it a thumbs up. I will be doing more of these soon. Let me know if there is a type of topic you want me to go over. The next one I might be doing is a bloody wall effect where uh, you put a texture on, on the wall and it kind of moves kind of like a, a waterfall or a river effect or random spawning. So you give it a, you give an object a certain amount of locations and it the game will randomly pick for you which one to place it in. So it would be really good for a house key. As you can see right here, I have a key. When I press play, the game randomly picks a new location for it, if it has been higher than 20. So the places it could be is here, in here, or upstairs in the sink. And there it is.
then you pick it up and the door opens so if you guys want to do something like that let me know but anyway thank you guys for watching this video again if you did enjoy it please give it a thumbs up comment rate subscribe and i hope this video was helpful and hope to see what you guys can do with it thank you and i hope to see you guys in another video real fucking soon bye bye